Hello there. Welcome back to Planet Mithril, and we're finally tackling the Shatterpoint version of my favourite Star Wars character, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now I'm in his R2, and both my faves are here. This is such a stunning sculpt with a lot of beautifully designed detail, which has been a pleasure to paint, even if it has been more white clone armour to deal with. We'll be tackling Obi-Wan with a combination of scale colour and Citadel paints to try and get the most out of all these details. So make sure your Kenobi is assembled securely and cleaned up, and we opted to undercoat our Kenobi with Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey Undercoat before we started. Anyway, enough of my jabbering on. Brush is ready guys, and let's get painting! Base Colours I'm going to start by base coating Kenobi's face, neck, and surprisingly big ears with Citadel Bugman's Glow. The hair and beard were base coated with the 2 to 1 ratio mix of Dubai Brown and Arbuckles Brown. The clone armour was then given a base coat with a 3 to 1 mix of graphite and white, applied in a few thin layers just to make sure we get nice, even, smooth coverage. The Jello robes were base coated with a 3 to 1 mix of Walnut and Iroko. The inner robes were base coated with a 2 to 1 mix of Eclipse Grey and Black. The belt and pouches were base coated with a 50-50 mix of Bosch Chestnut and Arbuckles Brown. The lightsaber hilt was then carefully picked out with thrash metal. and the blade base coated with a few thin coats of sky blue. Flesh Kenobi is mostly beard, so there's not a great deal of flesh to paint. I started by applying a pre-washed layer to the skin with a 2 to 1 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. With this layer in place, the face was then given a wash with diluted Reichlin Flesh Shade, letting this sink into the recesses to create some natural shading. I then went over and continued layering up the skin, adding more Cadian Flesh Tone to the mix until I was working with pure Cadian Flesh Tone. When you reach this stage, your Kenobi should look fairly similar in hue and tone to what we have here. I then started adding Kislev Flesh into the Cadian Flesh Tone and concentrated on framing the brow, bone and cheekbones and creating a defined line between his face and facial hair, which is something I actually struggle with personally in my own real life. I, like Kenobi, am pretty much mostly beard.
adding more Kislev flesh in gradual increments, at each stage focusing on pronouncing the facial features and tendons in the neck more and more and drawing that classic Kenobi look out of the model as best we can. For the final highlight stage, you guessed it, pallid witch flesh, guilty as charged. This was added just as a spot highlight on the most pronounced areas of skin. The tip of the nose and nostrils, tips of the ears and the edges of the brow to give them that typical Kenobi glare that Anakin is oh so familiar with. The eye recesses were then painted in with Abaddon Black. And finished off with pallid witch flesh. hair and beard. Obi-Wan has a very sandy, almost dusty look to his hair and it sits somewhere between blonde and brown, so I'm going to be using a mix of light and dark browns to try and emulate that as best I can. To start with, I increased the amount of Arbuckles in the base coat mix and applied this as a manual shade in the recesses of the hair. With that shade in place, I then layered over the hair using pure Dubai Brown. At this stage, I'm painstakingly defining all the hair by trying to pick out as many individual strands as possible. These are really well sculpted than everyone, so with a bit of good brush control, you'll smash this out no problem at all. I then continued layering up the hair, following much the same method as this stage with a 2 to 1 mix of Dubai Brown and Black Earth Brown. continuing to add more black earth brown in the mix until I'm at an approximate 2 to 1 split in favour of the black earth brown. With each stage you want to further define the flow of hair, focusing more on the crown, the apex of the curve of the scalp and the tips and ends of the hair itself. I then added about one third of pale skin to the overall mix and applied this as an all over dot highlight focusing purely on the crown, tips of the hair and where the light will be bouncing off most prominently. Clone Armour Before tackling anything, I carefully picked out the Republic symbol on the shoulder pad with blood red. It's much easier to do this here before we tackle the armour itself. With this in place, time to tackle the armour. I started by giving all the clone plating a thorough wash with some heavily diluted petroleum grey and manoeuvring it into as many of the recesses and grooves in the armour as possible. Once this was dry, time for the most time consuming stages of this model. All the clone armour was given a relayer over with a 4 to 1 mix of graphite and white, leaving the petroleum wash showing in the recesses. This will need to be thinned down sufficiently to avoid unsightly streaks and as such will need applying in multiple coats. Patience Anakin, <coughs> sorry painters, it's worth all the aggro in the end. This step is optional depending on how well your petrol wash took initially, 
but I went back over and further defined the recesses with super thin recessed lines of petroleum grey, just to heighten the contrast between this and the white of the armour. And when you're happy with how the armour is looking, it's time to apply the highlight. This is done using pure white and focusing on framing each of the plates and focusing on the corners and harsh edges of armour to create sharpness and definition over the plating itself. Again, time consuming, but so worth it. And then once this is done, we're done with white paint for a while. Hooray! Jedi robes. Gobi Brown was added to the Walnut Iroko base mix for the first manual shade over the robes. This was added in a 35 to 50% ratio, depending on how dark you want this initial shade to be. This will also help soften the red we'll be adding in a second for the second shade. I wanted to create slightly more definition in the recesses, and so I added a very small amount of red leather to the mix and applied a second manual recess shade. Be very careful here though, a little red leather really does go a long way. With our shades in place, it's time to start layering up and highlighting the robes. To start with, with a 2 to 1 mix of the base coat and Thra Brown. Now these are honestly some of the most well defined and most pleasurable robes and cloth I've ever painted. These are very well defined curves and flows within the material, so this stage will be an absolute doddle. Continue adding Thra Brown in the mix and focus on further defining the robes. The beauty here is the softness of the robe texture will contrast really well with the harsh lines and cleanness of the clone armour. This will help to keep the model visually interesting and act as multiple focal points. Continue adding Thra Brown until you're using pure Thra for the very first highlight stage. Final highlight stage was applied with a 2 to 1 ratio mix of Thra Brown and White Sands. Be careful not to add too much White Sands as we risk desaturating the already rather delicate tones of the robes if we add too much in at this stage. Inner robes. 
the inner robes were given a manual shade with a 1 to 2 ratio mix of Eclipse Grey and Black. Start adding rainy grey into the mix at an approximate 4 to 1 ratio favouring the base coat mixture, following the same steps and application method as we did for the robes. Keep adding rainy grey until you reach the final layer stage at which point your mix should contain no more than 3 parts rainy grey to 2 parts of the base coat mixture. Finally, add a small amount of white into the mix for the final edge highlight. Again, as with the robes, being careful not to over add and desaturate or overblow the dark tones that we were trying to maintain. Belt and pouches. The belt and pouches were given a shade with a 50-50 mix of red leather and Arbuckles brown. A layer was then applied to the belt and leathers adding in coke and copper to the original base coat mix. Start adding in Mojave White to the mix for the first highlight stage. Increasing the concentration of Mojave White in the mix for the final edge highlight for the leathers. Lightsaber. With the belt now done, you can pick out the buckles and metal details using thrash metal. All the metals were then given a quick wash using nylon oil. The saber grip was carefully picked out with Eclipse Grey. and all the bronze details around the emitter picked out with pure copper. Finally, the sabre hilt was given a quick edge highlight with speed metal. We started layering out the blade with a 3 to 1 ratio mix of sky blue and white, at this point surrounding most of the blade. Increasing the white to a 50-50 split for a second layer focusing on the upper half of the blade. And finally increasing the white further for the final edge highlight across the top edge of the blade. General Kenobi! <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> oh, I got some grievous stuck in my throat there. Whoa. Such a stunning and characterful piece to have on the tabletop at the head of the Republic and 212 legions 
finished. A model that I basically had to reward myself with after doing all those other clones. I really hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share the video. All your help continues to help push the content out to more avid hobbyists. And as always guys, take care and happy hobbying.